President Bola Chinubu has reportedly asked the Central Bank of Nigeria to suspend the implementation of the controversial cyber security levy policy and ordered a review. This followed the decision of the House of Representatives, which last Thursday, as a CBN to withdraw its circular, directing all banks to commence charging a 0.5% cybersecurity levy on all electronic transactions in the country. The CBN had on May 6, 2024, issued a circular mandating all banks, mobile money operators, and payment service providers to implement a new cybersecurity levy following the provisions laid out in the Cybercrime Prohibition Prevention Amendment Act of 2024. I'm now being joined by economist and financial analyst Dr. Boniface Chizia. Good to have you on this July, the Sunday talk show, uh, Dr. Chizia. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Reuben, for having me. Thank you. Okay. The latest development in this story is the report in the papers this morning that President Chinumbu has now asked the CBN, I don't want to use the word all that, with due respect <laughs> yes. to the independence the of the back. CBN, you know, granted by the CBN Act, you know, but that the president has said, this should be put on hold and it should be reviewed. The president's directive, as reported, will seem to be in line with the position of the House of Representatives that said, in fact, in line with the protest by Femi Falano, SEN, by Budget, by Serap, by Northern Elders Forum, by uh, Nigeria Economic Summit Group, by Concerned Nigerians, that there is indeed a problem with the interpretation of both Section 42 and Section 44 sub 2 of that Cybercrime uh, Act. Act. However, the big question where we can start from is to ask the question of what effect will be the president's direction. Well, you know, Ruben, I think it's uh, what is surprising about this. Well, you know, the feeling we got when this announcement was made, we thought that, uh, in fact, the national security advisor, you know, it was being imposed on central bank. Uh, and then, if that is the case, you know, well, it's difficult to find the link, you know, the, the relationship between central bank and national security advisor. So I think there's some difficulties. But in the, in the central bank on its own went on to introduce uh, uh, this uh, directive, you know, which is highly controversial. It introduced it, and you think to yourself, you know, have they done adequate, did they look at these things properly, the consequences it will have on banking? You know, on the one hand, central bank is talking about financial inclusion and so on and so forth. They want to uh, deepen, deepen the financial sector so that uh, uh, monetary policy have more impacts, more effects, and so on and so forth. And on the other hand, you know, we're introducing policies that would uh, undermine, you know, people's uh, willingness, you know, to uh, participate. So, and then when you get sort of an uh, announcement coming from the, uh, the president, now you begin also, you're a bit concerned in the sense that uh, we've had too many reversals of policies. You know, so again, this is a reversal of policy, and then, uh, or do, okay, we, you can say that, uh, um, President Tinubu is responsive, so he listens, comments, and but I think it's happened too often. Even you take the uh, the uh, electricity developments in, in that sector where you have banks and so on and so forth, there have been also reversals, <laughs> and so you don't have too many uh, uh, policies that have been introduced by this administration that have not been knee, -knee jerk. So a uh, policy is introduced and then uh, reverses and so we we'll go back and it doesn't it doesn't convey you know the right uh, uh, impression. So you, you have the distinct impression that uh, people are not thorough. You know so we are not don't do our due diligence. We don't uh, uh, take our time. You know look at the things very well and then uh, we introduce policies. Something happened. You know when the president came on board and then uh, removed subsidy on Thursday and we were told that uh, but that wasn't. Uh, that was like uh, extempore. It wasn't part of uh, the text he had to present, and he just did that. And um, you know, would, um, they caused so much confusion, so much hardship in the land, and we're still, we've still not gotten out of this. So I think yes, it's good that uh, the president has asked uh, CPN to withdraw it. And I, I was I, well, I was going to want and had CPN was going to continue, allow it to continue because uh, the opposition is, is very, very, very stiff. 
you know, you, you have National Assembly that's saying that uh, the, uh, the way it's been issued now, uh, subject to lots of, uh, it's, it's not clear. There's some confusion uh, in the requirements. You have uh, uh, trade union organizations, they are open arms. You have organized uh, uh, civil society uh, uh, organizations, they are all open arms. Almost everybody, even, you know, the prominent lawyers, everybody's, you know, because when you look at it, you know, the, the people are hurting. You know, the economy is not working and you have issues. And then you, the taxation, you know, it's penalty. People are going to pay. And so we're, we're not looking at the resources. I looked at what uh, Senator Andume uh, did say. It's, it's spot on. We're not, we're not doing anything that will uh, bring alleviate, you know, and even the palliatives, the money we've earned from uh, uh, making extra money, from subsidy removal, you know, that money, again, the governors have been allowed to hijack that money. And even the, the, the relief, we should go, come from that and go to you know, citizens, you know, they're not getting it. So I think that we should, we don't seem to be learning from my experience, I'm, I'm afraid to say. Okay, Dr. Chizzi, I, I hear you very clearly. But you see, you are accusing the Chinubu administration of introducing policies and reversing itself, and you say that speaks to confusion. But this same Chinubu administration, as you are aware, the IMF, at the end of the Article 4 consultation this week, or last week, whichever one applies, issued a statement saying that the uh, Chinumbu administration has done very well in terms of economic reforms, removal of subsidy, the redefinition of the foreign exchange uh, regime, uh, recalibration of the Naira, making it less uh, volatile, attraction of investment. I mean, the IMF gave us pass marks on all the issues and only just said the Chinumbu administration has to do more in terms of uh, conditional cash transfers and what it's called in that report, social protection. So this is the IMF, the big financial agency of the United Nations, commending the administration. And you say there is confusion. How? Oh, yes. Well, I, I think that uh, we've had running, running issues with IMF. IMF, um, IMF comes with policies, you know, that are you know, that are not tailor-made to particular environments, particular situations, and they want to force these policies on Nigerians. So the issue of uh, uh, subsidy removal, uh, having a um, uh, single uh, exchange rate within the system, they've all been there. They're, those are IMF policies. And so it, if uh, the new administration has come and they has done, you know, what they've been hankering about, they've been talking about for a long time, and, and, and people, you know, are aware of the consequences, the likely effects of such uh, those things being implemented on the population. Um, they, were, they were hesitant. You know, the immediate past administration had subsidy to just about when it was going to go, uh, because it, it knew, as it was made clear, that if that was implemented, it was going to affect their fortunes at the pools. So I, I think that uh, we will take what the IMF says, you know, with a pinch of salt. You know, I think that uh, they come with a global perspective on, on the on issues, and some of those comments they make, they are not situated to particular Nigerian situation. I think and, and that's, that's, that's the case. And if, if we are saying that uh, government has done very well in terms of uh, uh, subsidy removal, in terms of uh, unification of the exchanges and so on and so forth, where are we today? I think that's, uh, those are the issues, you know. So let's even take subsidy removal, you know, uh, even when, where the price got to. Right? So it's just everybody, that, uh, that subsidy has been stopped. <laughs> if the, if the, the, the administration continue with the subsidy, by now, the rioting in this country will have gone, gone out of hand. So the, the, that was stopped long ago. Now take it when the unification of a, a, a single digit uh, um, uh, rate, exchange rate within the system. You know, what is position today? You know, so yeah, we, we commend the um, governor of uh, Central Bank. Uh, he's done wonderfully well. He's done something that nobody has done before in this economy. Uh, although uh, people say, you know, they, they, they cost the problem. It's their own making. But the, the, the Nara, you know, went to almost 2,000 uh, Nara to a dollar. Of course, we, we seem to be getting back there. But he introduced policies. Of course, uh, uh, some of us stood by him and we did say that uh, that was wonderful. So we will attract uh, for portfolio investors, so they bring in dollars and so on and so forth, and then you try and plug leakages. And then um, it, it started, I begin to bring in bureau the change, and then, you know, that started impacting on the rate of exchange. And most people didn't believe it because it never happened before. You know, and it was happening. And in spite of the fact that, you know, that we have this complaint that says, uh, you know, we must have productivity. Yes, we must, we must end dollars. 
But there's many ways, you know, to skin a cat. So you have the aspiral remittances and so on, which is quite substantial. So we focus on so many things. So I think that uh, um, if you look at those things, even as we speak today, you know, it's not it's not Ufuru. It's like there are lots of challenges. And so it's not time for us to begin okay, to pop, pop Chizia, to One yes. of the things you mentioned earlier on yes. was taxation. Yes. Yesterday, the federal government had uh, a close-out uh, retreat of the Presidential Fiscal Policy and Task Committee, reform. the committee reform, uh, the reform committee that is led by Taiwo Oyedele. Yeah. And at that uh, retreat, the vice president, who was represented by one of his special advisors, made the point that, look, Nigerians should not uh, you know, panic over tax reforms. That the whole idea of taxation reforms is to, you know, encourage revenue. Investments. Investments, so. attract investments, and that ultimately is for the benefit of Nigerians. And the cyber security levy will seem to fall within that uh, uh, framework. So is it the case that traditionally, you know, the taxman is not, it's never popular mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm -hmm. There's this uh, book called The Taxman. Mm -hmm. Comment. Mm -hmm. You know, the tax man is always a, a very bad man yes. in any community. Do you think that the way Nigerians are complaining about multiple taxation, over taxation, is uh, out of this, you know, almost congenital fear of the uh, tax man? Because Nigerians don't like to pay tax anyway. Well, I, I think that if you, if you look at the uh, uh, presidential uh, commission and uh, and, and physical policies and the tax reform. Uh, one of the things they did say, they did promise us, is that uh, they are, we are going to reduce the number of taxes in our environment. That's one of the prom promises they made to us, you know. So, and it, this would seem, you know, what's happening now would seem to run, uh, and to be counter, uh, you know, to what they say to us. This is increasing taxation, and this is really what it is. And so, yes, you can have tax reforms. If you're going to have tax reforms, and because you are in a global village, you know, and so you have to be competitive. So you have to want to attract money from outside. And so you, you are, you're mindful of, of uh, the tax rates. And also, people are concerned. One of the problems we've had in this environment is, is a, a problem of multiple taxation. It's always been there. People have complained. You know, you know I, I take a position that uh, the tax revenue, the income will end in Nigeria as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a, related to our gross domestic product, Nigeria has about the lowest in the sub-region. And so there's a need for us to adopt strategies advisedly that would boost the tax revenue, but not to hike. I think that there are so many people out there uh, that should be paying tax that are not paying, that many people are avoiding taxation. You know, there are many people in the market there that are earning fantastic monies. And what, what do we say? We leave this in some, you know, some uh, miscreants, you know, running all over the place. And going, going, harassing people, collecting monies from them, and this money is never, never, never get to the treasury. So I, I think that uh, yes, we can do our task reforms. I hope that, as they've said, uh, that it will lead us in that direction because that's exactly what is desired. We need task reform that is progressive. We need task reform that is competitive. We need task reforms that people coming from outside would accept. So that that's that's a thing. But I, I want to say, repeat again, that. Uh, this one, we're, we're increasing the number of taxations. And we can begin to look at this uh, cyber security tax and begin to ask questions, you know, really. It, where is it done? I don't know. I've asked myself. I try to search in the web. Is, there, is this tax, is it, is, it, uh, is it practiced elsewhere? And if it's not practiced else, elsewhere, so we are going down a, a lonely road. And we need to be clearly wary. Uh, uh, you know, okay, that. two things. Yes. Uh, President Tinubu has said the uh, implementation, the directive as communicated through the circular of the CBN should be put on hold. It's supposed to take effect by May 20. Now, one, what does that say about the independence of the CBN? In the Article 4 consultation report of the IMF on Nigeria, one of the things they talked about was about the autonomy of the CBN, that the CBN should be free uh, to manage the monetary side without political 
interference. You have just said, oh, President Tinubu is listening to the people. Okay, he's listening to the people. Should it extend to dictating to the central bank? The second leg of it is the legal part. The House of Reps, Falano SEN, and other lawyers saying, we need to take a second look at this law. What is the way forward without mixing up things? Well, I think that uh, the CBN has autonomy. The autonomy it has is referred to as instrument autonomy. And so that means that uh, to the extent that there's an issue, there's a problem, and then the CBN wants to tackle that problem, the CBN should have the independence to decide on how to go about this. But you know what's happening now? The question it, uh, it, it brings to the table is increasing tax. Is that CBN's responsibility? I think that's, that's physical policy. Hey, taxation is physical policy. And so if you ask me, uh, the CBN has crossed the line, crossed the boundary. You know, and that was why I said earlier on, I thought that the central bank was acting on instructions. You know, it, it, it taxation, increasing tax revenue is essentially fiscal authority responsibility. And so if um, President Tinubu, you know, uh, comes and then I thought that uh, the CBN was acting on, um, you know, with autonomy doesn't mean that CBN wouldn't take directives from the president, you know. At, at, at the end of the day, the president uh, uh, appointed uh, uh, Cardoso, you know, as governor. So, but in keeping with best practice, you know, they should have some independence in terms of deciding what instruments, you know, to use. So uh, we shouldn't see this as, uh, I don't see it as, you know, uh, Tinubu is uh, taking off the, uh, the autonomy of central bank. I think that maybe if you ask me, I think that central bank, in fact, actually uh, went beyond. Maybe because the thing is done, the south, banks are going to collect it and so on and so forth. So uh, they've done that. But hey, I don't know whether that's a monetary policy. I have, I have my challenge. But, you know, raising tasks, and, you know, it's not. Okay, uh, as a follow-up to that. Yes. Can public institutions be funded directly by bank deposit taxes? with the CBN as a collection agent? And then can the Office of the National Security Advisor receive unappropriated funding for activities, whether it's called cyber security levy or any other name? Well, I think that, uh, again, we have to visit, look at the act and see what the, what the act says, you know, because I said this is, it is a novel, a novel. You know, people are even challenging the fact that uh, the monies that were going to be raised, 40% was going to pay to the National Security Advisor. And so, you know, people have raised this uh, uh, question that, you know, because really all revenues, you know, that have been raised like that should accrue to the uh, federation account. Section 162 sub 1 yeah, so, of the 1999. Yeah, so it should, you know. So uh, even now, uh, taking off 40%, again, that's, that's in breach of, uh, of uh, the law. And, and then whether central bank can use uh, uh, customers' deposits, you know, the banks are already sweltering. You know, one of the reforms, one of the things that central bank did in trying to push, uh, you know, manage the exchange rate and so on and so forth is to, uh, what, what extent, restrain the capacity of the banks to create, and um, to give credit, and, uh, you know, create money supply. And so uh, you, you pay 45% of your, you know, your deposits, uh, central bank, you keep, uh, you keep a cash liquidity ratio of about 30%. And then you find that the amount of money the, the banks, you know, they have available for them to even do the regular banking is it's, it's limited. And so you find that the banks, if you look at, follow closely what they've been doing, most of them have been going back to uh, the uh, central bank, you know, to, to borrow. You know, central bank has a, a lender of a large resort. And uh, who shouldn't? And uh, if I look at some, uh, I look at this, you know, uh, in a passing manner. And I see that most banks are beginning to, because they, they don't have the cash. And so using depositors' money to do all those things, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not allowed. You know, depositors' money, you're supposed to, when people deposit money, it's from that money that you lend. And so when you're looking at your lending, you're looking at your lending versus your deposit. The, the, the capital of the banks keep, it's not meant to be lent. It's meant to put fiscal infrastructure. It's meant to be put there as an insurance. And so in case of, you know, the banks fall on hard times and so on, and, and people are going to, uh, customers are going to begin to uh, panic and begin to uh, take their deposits and go, but the, the central bank should have like a shock absorber, you know, to make sure that money is used. Well, you don't, you don't normally use capital uh, funds, you know, to lend uh, to customers. So you collect the uh, deposits from people. So that's why it's called financial intermediation. So you, you get people deposit and then you lend. And that's exactly what it should be. And if you use it otherwise, 
then uh, that's not what it should be. Well, uh, Dr. Chizia, you've talked about the threat to financial inclusion. We have also heard consistently that Nigeria is underbanked. And uh, in the face of this law, if it is allowed to stand, more people would uh, just stay away from the uh, banking system. So uh, if it stands, are we likely to also have a free riders uh, situation where people who don't go near the bank don't have to pay any digital uh, <laughs> uh, uh, levy? And then what are the implications for the banking system? Well, I think that, uh, let's put it this way, I think that, that what Nido Race we've had for so many years now is uh, you know, financial inclusion. I say what you're trying to do is to get many people to come into the banking system. You know, because really, what, if you look at it uh, properly, you know, what's happening is that if monies are not within the banking system, they, uh, a policy, monetary policy cannot touch them. And so to the extent you have lots of money outside, outside the banking system, what effect it has is that it un undermines the effectiveness of monetary policy. And so uh, the CBN will be shooting itself on the leg, you know, by, um, you know, taking steps, uh, taking measures that will be counter to this push, this trust, you know, to uh, uh, get people to embrace banking. And, and uh, really, one of the things we've gained recently is uh, electronic banking, you know, so uh, that has caught on like a you know, wildfire. Most people are using it now, so transfers and so on and so forth. And then suddenly you start taking steps. Uh, we're still struggling, you know, to increase participation. You know, uh, recently POS and, and banks are not hustling. You know, you don't, see, you don't even have cash enough in the banks. But don't, I don't know what's uh, causing that, uh, uh, you know, causing this problem. I told I no, also, there is no money in the banks, but the uh, POS. They have money. They have Yes, the and, and the CBN now wants to also, I think I read somewhere, they want to also begin to get them to register, POS to register, and begin to pay levies. And pay. So I think that, yes, we need to uh, begin to raise money. So I think that we need to be a bit more circumspect in the way we go so about doing that. Yes, confused. Yes, yes, yes. But in terms of looking for a solution, one of the issues that commentators have raised with regard to this is that there's even a problem with the percentage. The uh, Cybercrime Prohibition and Prevention Act of 2015 talked about 0.005%. Somehow, in the 2024 amendment, what we have is 0.5 percent, about 100 uh, uh, percent increase. increase. In the 2015 uh, uh, Act, there was reference to businesses. The nature of the exemptions were clear. In this one, it just says business. And then even in this 2024 Act, yeah, you know, the, the law is talking about you know, uh, 0 0.5 in some places, he's talking about 0 0.005% uh, in some other places. Now, what does that say mm. about the quality of service delivery by the National Assembly of Nigeria? Mm. Now that they are even quarreling with each other. Mm. The House of Reps is saying what the uh, Senate passed is wrong. The Senate is saying that we did uh, the right thing. I mean, what, how, what kind of characters do we have in the National Assembly of Nigeria? Mm. Where does the problem really lie? Well, I think that uh, we need to, again, I go back to the values we bring to the table. You know, I mean, we should have National Assembly populated, and, uh, the, the, and the House of Red, uh, 300 and something, and uh, the ones are close. You know, we have so many people, and some of them have, people are experienced who have been in governance, been in uh, positions of responsibility. For this to be happening, it's alarming, not to say the least. Well, you have mistakes, sort of mistakes, it's fundamental mistakes on what the rate should be, what, what you, you just related. So you go to 2015, you come to 2024, and, and rates are different. You know, I think that uh, I read somewhere, when somebody says, in fact, we just have to go back to what it was in 2015 and begin to work from there. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I think that uh, and this, uh, uh, this proposal is, is, is dead on arrival. I don't think that, uh, you know, that this thing should be resurrected anymore. 
Well, let's get the economy going. There are lots of other things that should challenge this government. You know, they should get, uh, don't go to a refinery, should begin to flood the place with uh, products and so on. They should, uh, and for exchange rates, we should you know, do everything possible to manage the exchange rates. You know, well, recently it's gone to about one point, uh, 1,500. You know, at the time we came close to 1,000. And most of us were celebrating mood. You know, I think that also something has to be done in that direction. So uh, those are more urgent things. And I think that this thing, with all the confusion, you know, I, I, want, I don't want to dissipate energy, but, but, but the point, the picture it paints is people who are not very serious. You know, not, okay, yes. uh, 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 Dr. Chizia, by way of summary, you are saying that uh, Yeme Cardoso CBN is not serious, is confused, and that uh, President Tinubu has acted rightly by intervening to prevent the social crisis that may result from the confusion of Yemen's Caduceus CBN. Well, I think that's Would that right. be a fair summary? No, it isn't. Because I, I don't think, uh, like I said earlier on, I don't think that CBN is an originator of this, this policy. Now, that's where I stand. I don't think so. You know, because I, you know, tax and taxation, you know, it's not, it should not be responsible of, of Central Bank. You know, I mean, if the central bank is going to tax as uh, banks to pay charges and so on and so forth, you know, collect money on deposits and so on and so forth. They, they are, okay, one can understand that. We are talking of, okay, it's electronic transfer, but we are talking of taxation, like I said earlier on. That is more within the point view of the fiscal authority. And then look at the way it's going. The money is not going to be kept at the central bank. Uh, it's going to go to a traditional account part of it and then to a national security advisor. That's a, that's a fund that has been created. So it will not be fair... A summary, you know, to say that uh, if I think to, to be said about this uh, central bank under Cardoso, is that to say that uh, uh, so far we're giving kudos. We think that uh, it's done so, so, so well and, and it is so focused and it has come with some initiatives, particularly in trying to uh, stem and the rate of uh, fall of the Naira. And most people are celebrating them, you know. So um, I hear uh, uh, Sandy, Sandy Shew, that senator saying that, say, you mean dollar doesn't respect Cardoso again? So I think that uh, it would not be fair to say that the confusion with central bank. And that uh, confusion is within policy, people making policy, people introducing policy, the thoroughness we bring to the table, the home, we make sure that we, we take our time, we look at things thoroughly before they are introduced. You know, all this knee jerk, introduce, reverse, and so on. You take the, um, the, uh, the electricity tariff, uh, they've been reversed us already. And so that's, that has been the hallmark in all the reforms, you know, which we, we've seen lately. So you, you put the thing and then there are glitches here and there, then we, we run back and then we reverse them and so on and so forth. And it, it doesn't project us as people who are professional. Well, on that note, I would like to thank you very much, Dr. Boniface Chizia, uh, for joining us. So do I have this suspicion that you condemned IMF commendation on one hand, that you protected the CBN under Yemi Kadusso. Yes. But it's okay. We know how these uh, things work. Yes. Thank you very much for joining us.